Hey YouTubers, I got something a little different today. I want to talk to you about my impressions of the Polk Audio R700 floor standing speakers. Uh, they're the tall ones back there in the corner. I like them a lot. I think they're good value for the money, but spoiler alert, they're not for me. I'm going to be sending them back. So I want to tell you about what I like about them and what I don't like about them and whether or not they may be the right speakers for you. Okay, the first thing I wasn't prepared for is just how big these speakers are and how big the boxes are they come in. Uh, these are not going to ship UPS. These are going to come to your house via freight because each box with the speaker in it is pretty close to 100 pounds, and that's beyond the limits of regular UPS. And so when you open each box inside, you will find an owner's manual and a wrench to adjust the feet that are on there. Uh, I really recommend that you lay the boxes on their sides and open the bottom and slide the speaker out from the bottom. Uh, don't turn it on either narrow side and slide it out. You may be sliding it out with the speakers down, with the drivers down. You would not want to do that, even though the grills are on them in shipping. You want to slide them out with the broad side on the floor so they come out on one side or the other with the drivers out to the side where they'll be safe. Now, once you pull the speakers out, they're covered in a plastic bag. Once you remove that, they're covered in a cloth sack. Once you remove that, there's your speakers. So uh, be prepared. You're going to need two people to move these. Now, in order to talk about the R700s, I need to let you know what I'm comparing them to. So on the far left, we have the Monitor Audio RS6 for standing speakers, which are on loan from a friend of mine. In the middle, we have the OmniSound TCM3 speakers, which I've had for 34 years and still enjoy today. I'm looking for something to go to the next level. And of course, the Polk R700s. I also have a pair of AccuStat 2 plus 2 electrostatic speakers. These were a gift from a friend, and I've spent about three months restoring them to as close to new as I possibly could. And they're a lot of fun, but I'll be putting those up for sale soon. They're just not for me. So I'm comparing some very unique and very different speakers. So let me talk about the R700s. The R700s are a really handsome set of speakers that look much more expensive than they are. Uh, the vinyl wrap is very good quality and looks like a real wood veneer unless you look really, really closely. Uh, I really love the, the feet on it that you see here covered in the rubber uh, covers, but you can pop those covers off and there's metal spikes underneath uh, for using on carpet. Uh, the feet are adjustable, so if your floor is a little uneven, you can level them out. Uh, that's what the little wrench is for that comes in with them. The woofers and mid-range and tweeter are all very handsome looking and understated. I think they look great with or without the grills. Uh, the grills are a nice gray tweed color on the walnut ones. I think the grills are black if you order the black speakers. They're a very heavy set of speakers, so be prepared to get some help moving them around. Uh, I have read reviews where people have said that the feet on them are will break if you move them around. Uh, I can see how that could be possible if you have the rubber feet on on carpet like this. You have to lift them completely up to move them. You, there's no dragging them across the carpet. That rubber just grips too much. So I, I think that people who have uh, broken the feet on these things have mishandled them. Uh, I was able to uh, get them out of the boxes and get them set up by myself and move them around several times by myself. Uh, just be very cautious about it. Um, like I said, they're really good looking, good build quality. The cabinets seem very solid. Uh, the My reference speakers, the black TCM3s in the middle, uh, those are massively overbuilt. Uh, they're hand-built to a very high standard, and I would put the Polks on par with those hand-built speakers. Uh, one thing I really like about the Polks is the height. It actually gets the tweeters up to ear level. Uh, a lot of floor standing speakers fall a little bit short, including my reference speakers. 
And so that's one thing I really like about them. They're truly floor standing speakers. Uh, they have a very smooth frequency response. Uh, that's in my room. I don't know about anechoic chamber response. I, I can't really speak to that. But they have a very, very smooth frequency response and very powerful bass, as you would expect from two 8-inch woofers. Um, they're not fatiguing at all. They have a very smooth and warm sound to them, and I listen to them at moderate to high volume for an entire day. And at no time do my ears feel fatigued or was I tired of listening to them. So that is a huge plus on their side. Um, I don't love the sound of them, though. With the other speakers, both the monitor audios, the electrostatics, and the TCM3s, I feel like when I'm in my listening position, the vocals come to me, and the vocals are out in front. My biggest complaint with the Polks is I feel like the vocals are recessed. It feels like the drums are up front, and the main vocalist is behind the drum set. I know that sounds weird, but that's just my sense of how these speakers sound. Um, they just, the upper mid-range uh, is a little bit kind of dialed back, and the tweeter, although non-fatiguing, also feels like it rolls off a little bit and is a little soft. And I can't tell if the upper mid-range and tweeters are weak or if the bass is simply too strong and masking it. Um, the bass on these speakers is just too much for my taste, and I've tried pulling them out three feet into the room and three feet from the sidewalls, and they still just have too much bass. Um, the integrated amplifier I'm using now actually has tone controls, and turning the bass down and turning the treble up helps somewhat, but my plan is to move up to a higher quality uh, separates with a preamp and amplifier, and it's rare to find tone controls on those kind of components these days, so I need to find some speakers I can be happy with without using tone control. So that's a big part of why these are going back. I really think that the treble could stand to have more detail and more air. I think these would be phenomenal in a home theater setting. Uh, their strong bass uh, would really make movies exciting even without a subwoofer. And your center channel would take care of your vocals so you wouldn't have a problem with the vocals being masked as I find that they are. And so I think for home theater, they'd be a knockout. For critical listening, for my taste, and in my room, and with my electronics, they just fall short. And so that's why I'm sending them back. Uh, if you like a warm, mellow, easygoing speaker with a really rich bass, this is your speaker. I'm looking for something a little more balanced, a little bit more air, and I want the vocalist to come out and meet me in the middle of the room and not have to sort of lean forward in my chair and listen for them. And so, uh, like I say, these are just not my cup of tea. But uh, kudos for Polk for building such a great speaker at this price point. Uh, it really does. I think it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with much more expensive speakers.